Okay. Hi, class. So uh, we are going to start a few couple of videos during your uh, this time of when you guys are at home. So because we would like to give you some questions and then pass you on your next grade and you know give you a bit of evaluation. That's the main. Um, uh, aim of these uh, videos and also to, view, to you know actually cover up your syllabus because you know, you're missing out a lot of things a lot of holidays never mind okay so the first thing is now before we uh, ended our in-person classes we did a bit of these elements compounds and mixtures but we will look again about this and then you know proceed with your uh, syllabus into the next topic also okay so let's discuss what these elements compounds and mixtures are so most, most important thing is we need to know what these uh, terms are. These are terms. Element is a term, compound is a term, and mixture is a term. So what do they mean? What is the uh, meaning of these words? So if you go to the, if you see element, element is the smallest unit of chemical substance. So it is the smallest unit. So an element cannot be further uh, broken down to something smaller. You go, someone can't come and tell that there is a sub-element. No, there's nothing like that. Or a mini element. The only thing there is the element. Element is the smallest unit of a chemical substance. Something like in biology, in a human body, the smallest unit is a cell. So some in chemistry, in chemical substance, the smallest unit is a element. So those are the things that are found in the periodic table. The smallest unit of chemical substances are the ones that are found in the periodic table any element it could be sodium any element in the periodic table is an element smallest unit and then we go to compounds compound is when two or more uh, elements combine together chemically so when you when they chemically combine with each other okay means uh, they will react with each other and form a new compound okay so for example if, we, if you take something like this Okay, if you are able to uh, mix uh, salt and water, okay, or something like that, uh, you are able to produce a new substance. You can see it. No? You can see salt separately, water separately. You have you have mixed them together. So there's a reaction that has happened and produced a new product that you didn't have initially. So similarly in this example, if you see sodium and chlorine, it, it will give you sodium chloride. So sodium is one element, chlorine is another element. They are two different elements, but they will produce a new compound, a new product, which is or sodium chloride, which is normal table salt. Okay, that's what is that is what is uh, a compound. Then let's go for a mixture. Mixture means when two or more elements are physically combined with each other. That means they don't undergo any reaction. That means if you combine those two, you aren't able to get a new a product something like sand and water so if you put sand and water you will when you try to mix it you know you can you know stir it for about 100 times a million times but yet you aren't able to achieve a new product you will always see sand and water separated that means they are not being uh, chemically uh, combined but they are physically combined they are touching with each other but they are not uh, mixing with each other to produce a new a product or a new substance. Okay. Then we look into separating these mixtures. So mixtures, it could be uh, solid solid mixtures or uh, solid liquid mixtures. There could be a uh, many things like that. Okay. So um, that is the thing. So we we'll look look into how to uh, separate these uh, uh, mixtures. So first we'll look. How to separate liquid from a solid liquid mixture? So, if you want to separate a liquid from a solid liquid mixture, what you could do is you could uh, either use the method called filtration, which is you use a filter paper and you pass the use a filter paper and a filter funnel, and then you pass the substance, and then the solid part remains in the filter paper, and the liquid part portion goes through uh, the filter filter paper and filter funnel. So that's the way you separate. Or else you can use a decanty method. Decanty method is, for example, you could, you have seen, if you want to separate water and there may, might be something heavy, it should be heavy, but the solid should be heavy in this case. 
Okay, so if you have a heavy solid and liquid, what you could do, you can slowly tilt the particular uh, jar or something and uh, remove the water or, or remove the liquid. And then the solid will remain in the jar and the liquid will uh, be removed. So that's one. Uh, then the next one, separating, oh, I made a mistake out here. It should be separating a solid from a solid, solid mixture. Let me, let me just make it really fast. Mistakes do tend to happen. That's not a big issue. Yeah. So let's go for a how to separate a solid from a solid solid mixture. So in the case you say you have two different types of solids. Say you have a uh, instance where you have rocks and you have some other sand. How do you? Uh, how are you able to uh, uh, distinguish them or separate? Them? One way you could do is is the normal way if you don't want to use any other tools you can just hand pick them you can hand pick and separate them one by one that's what but in the case if you have a mixture solid solid mixture which has a different unique property something like a um, magnetic property if, so, if one of the uh, so solid particles have a magnetic property something if you want to uh, separate maybe iron fillings and maybe sand so then iron fillings have a magnetic property so when it has a magnetic property, what it can do is the if you use a magnet, the iron fillings will get attracted to the magnet, and the sand will still remain in the particular uh, base, you know, whatever uh, is there. Okay, so that's one way you can do. And then you have a mixture called a immiscible liquid mixture. That means the two liquids don't mix with each other. So for example, if you want to mix oil and water, you will always see that oil and water forms two layers. They don't mix with each other. You would see, uh, you can clearly see two different layers being formed. So in that case, the way you can separate them is using a separating funnel. So separating funnel, if you see, if you look in your textbooks, you will see a separating funnel uh, equipment where you see two different layers of liquids being formed. So that's the way you do it. And then you open the tap slowly until one of the liquid falls away and the, the other portion of the liquid remains in this particular separating funnel. Then we go to separating compound. So separating compound then compound means now the uh, a new particular compound something has been formed. Okay, something new has been formed, we want to separate them. That means we want to get back the original elements. That's, that's what we are doing. Okay, so how do we do it? So first of all, if you want to separate a liquid from a solid liquid compound, so for example, you have salt water. Okay, that's the example I can give you salt water and you want the water from it. You don't want the salt, but you want the water from it. So what do you do? You do a process called distillation. We discussed this also in class, which is called distillation. Distillation is where you heat the particular mixture and then slowly and slowly and when the uh, liquid reaches its boiling point, it will boil and the liquid, you can collect the liquid into a vessel. Second part, separating a solid from a solid liquid mixture. So in that case, if you still take an example of salt water, in this case, you don't want the water, you want the solid, you want the salt. So what do you do? You can evaporate. If you keep it under the sun, with time, the liquid will go away and the solid uh, will be visible to you and then you can collect the uh, solid. Lastly, you have separating two Visible liquids. When we say visible, that means the two liquids are able to combine with each other. Okay, so there are certain liquids that are able to combine with each other. So when they combine with each other, what happens is we aren't able to use uh, separating funnel method. You can't use because you can't distinguish which one are they. Okay, so the only thing we can use is fractional distillation. It's a technique which depends mainly on uh, boiling points. So uh, each liquid will have a unique boiling point. So depending on the boiling point, one will uh, form, uh, we could be collected first, and then the other liquid will be collected uh, in the next uh, steps. So those are the uh, techniques that you are able to uh, separate these compounds and these mixtures. So in this lesson, what we did is we uh, defined what elements compound the mixtures are. Then we looked into how to separate these and uh, we learned about some new techniques like distillation, fractional distillation and like that. So go through your textbook and see uh, what, what do you know about this and what you have learned new and uh, I'll meet you in the next class.
Okay. Thank you.